Stop moving your tokens around. I didn't touch it. It's not me. <laughs> I see stuff flying all over the place. Oh, I did not put Mitch over there. It's like my hands are away from the mouse. So what are we doing tonight? What are you guys want to do? I say we run away. We back up out of this barn basement of a barn. Yeah, yeah. We're just gonna we're in party a barn, with and the barn had a trap door, and there was a tunnel, and there was oh, yeah. the trap door that was not trapped. I, I want to get that humble bundle that they got on right now, um, and I want to play. Uh, what is it called? I'm looking at it now. Um, Pulsar Lost Colony. It looks fun as hell. Do you guys just want to do that tonight? And you know, not record. <laughs> skip, skip this. Should we yeah. record ourselves playing Pulsar? <laughs> oh my gosh, absolutely! It'd be the worst podcast that the, ever. That was Instead the Starship one. Right? We just provide the audio. <laughs> it's like yeah, it's like when one. it's like okay. back in the day when your favorite radio station would go suddenly from like like rock to like the next <gasps> the next day you wake up and, it, and it's like country. Country. It's like what wow, happens? Yeah. yeah, that would be this podcast. Yep, Donnie's old. He knows what a radio station yep, is. Yep, exactly. <laughs> Dude, I'm a, I'm a, my favorite radio station in high school is WVVX out of Chicago. D- Donnie is uh, on the younger end in this outfit, <laughs> actually. <laughs> Isn't he? No, I thought he's he was barely older. He's, he's, he I'm and I the are oldest. about the same I'm age, the I think. Yeah, Bill's the oldest. Yeah. Um, I think I think Brad comes next, actually. I don't know. Maybe. Chris, Chris used to be the youngest. Chris probably still is the youngest. He still is. <laughs> still is so we're all aging at the same rate. <laughs> no, nope, I'm it not. I'm getting, I, I stopped at 45 and started going backwards. <laughs> Did you? That's like that episode of Friends where Joey's like, let the others grow old, not right. me. <laughs> wow. Yeah, we got deal. a deal. <laughs> now we're talking about friends. I think we should just start playing. It's, yeah, let's do Okay, uh-huh. Try's going to roll for initiative. Cause it's like I'm you're always right. stuck in second. I had the DVDs and shit, you know. Um, I had an ex-girlfriend took them with her when she Ooh, when, yeah. when we parted ways. So it's always kind of been a sore spot for me. But Really? Cause I you, sure can watch it on, you can watch it on Netflix. It's free. Yeah, or it's, I think it's on Peacock now. Peacock This now, is before, yeah. before Netflix. <laughs> you said. Oh, I know. <laughs> back, back when Netflix, you would just get it in the mail. Oh my god, I remember that. Yeah. That's right, that little like sleeve. I yeah, think the Netflix crap. mail service has just ended. Yeah, it just, was all. It was up it. until 2023. Wow, and it's just now ended. You can still do it. That's wild. I forgot all about that. Crazy, right? Yeah, some old fart. I'm Facebook friends uh, with lamented it on his, really? on his profile. Yes, he was. Doesn't have the internet. Well, he's got the internet. I, I suppose he's, he's Facebook, on Facebook. But, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so there's these hags. Oh, the hags. Yeah. All right. So sure. So yeah. So Harim comes to you last episode after your kingdom turn, and he's like, "I've uh, heard of uh, a cult uh, doing uh, some stuff here. Do you want me to go find it?" You were like, "Yeah, bro. Could you?" And he passes his uh, his uh, magic check and leads you to this barn where he believes the cult activity is ongoing. You uh, enter the barn, you look around, you find a trap door, you go down it, and then uh, uh, Drycol May rocks this uh, perception check, sees down the hall uh, at this perfect angle, and he sees five women engaged in some sort of haggish ritual or something like that. You know, and, uh, you know, this is a, this is pitch black down here. It's dark, but as you're looking down the tunnel into where the, into where the ritual is happening, uh, you see that there are torch, there's torchlight there. And, you know, they, they seem to be aware of you and they seem to be casting as, as if they're trying to get something done, uh, before you are upon them. So I picture you guys, you know, you're about 25 feet back down this tunnel right now. Um, take me into, take me into your thought process. What, what's going on? So it's from what we can see, it looks like a hostile action, right? Like they're not summoning like a buttery cheesecake or something. You know, all you know is that they seem to be in a rush to finish, but you're not sure what they're doing. I mean, it's right. probably a safe assumption that it's hostile, but you know, I mean, you never know. Are they smiling? <laughs> all right. Can we see at each other? Yeah. Oh, they, yeah. They seem very happy, but then they look back at you and they're like, Ugh. <laughs> and then they look back at each other. They're smiling again. But then they look back at you and they're just like, Ugh. So we're all aware of them at this point, right? Yeah. Yeah, I, I assume Cole May was just like, bro, hags. It's hags. It's hags, the hags, bro. Hey, uh, who's playing Harim? Who's, oh, well, who is, who indeed is playing the new and improved uh, level three Harim? Uh, let's roll for it. Or no, you just wanted to decide. Yeah, which roll for which die are we rolling? Highest, highest D20 yeah. roll plays Harim. So is this one of those instances where we want the low roll? No. <laughs> I do. 
Oh, I got nat 15. 20. No way. Oh, no, no, no. Are you serious? <laughs> there, there goes my 20. <laughs> there you go, Chris. I had, a, I had an 18, so I was a little, I was a little worried. Chris, a 14, you've got a good, so. Chris, you've got a good harem impression. Will you do a little harem for us before we get going? You get us going. Okay. Oh, okay. <laughs> I just can't help. Just I a can, rain like, cloud I, I like, follows was, me wherever I go, kind of like you. Yeah. <laughs> I like how when one Eeyore person right when one person does it, at least two other people do it behind. Them. We all do it okay. together. Okay. 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 Yeah. okay. I, I well, yeah. So it. I think uh, somebody needs to like say, "Hey, what's going on?" Yo, hey. I don't know. Like verbally. <laughs> uh, I'm going to. Like, can we approach, but not like in a charging manner? Like have our well. Mm, you could. You do not say that, Brad. <laughs> I know where your head was. Don't do it. <laughs> what? what are you I don't try to talk to him. Yeah. Well, I mean, just like if we can get closer without them like doing anything I, hostile. I to would us. love to role play as five women uh, and talk to you guys. <laughs> you <wanna do> this? <laughs> uh, excuse me. We want to talk to you about the lack of permit for this building. It is actually within our limits of. <laughs> you have a minute. They cast faster. <laughs> <laughs> do you no, have a minute no, to talk me. about Shrike Haven? Do you, do you have a minute to talk about uh, the elections coming up? Um, no. Okay. So what's it going to be? Are you going to approach um, non-threateningly uh, or are you going to run in? Um, weapons are out. Weapons, like, I've weapons. got my sword out and I'm approaching. Okay. Trying to talk. Like, and hey, I hate what's to up? go back in time, but like Harry, he was telling us that they're cultists. Did he tell us if they were like doing bad cult things or if they were just kind of you know hanging out let me uh roll a check to see what herring knows or actually player of herring would you make a religion check religion herring is super religious you're in the corner finding your religion oh 26 on religion oh yeah Ooh. um herring Herim. recognizes these women as cultists of the goddess gyrana uh, Gairana is a uh, mid-level, low-level deity. She is chaotic evil. Her followers are neutral evil and chaotic evil. Uh, she is also known as the angry hag. And uh, she, um, her domains are ambition, nightmares, pain, and zeal. So right up Harim's alley. Oh, they're evil. They're, like, yeah. And in fact... I'll mention this too before uh, before we proceed, uh, which is that you know my first homebrew uh, campaign that I ran years and years ago, um, it was uh, I, I used Gyrana a ton in that in that uh, campaign because I wanted to keep things very like small time and localized, so I picked very small niche uh, deities, and Gyrana was the kind of the big bad deity that I used. So I, I've I've thought a lot of, about about Gyrana over the years. So when she came back up, I was like, oh, that's cool. Well, what's H- Harim's alignment again? Isn't he evil? Like, is he uh, he's, neutral? He's chaotic he's neutral. He's chaotic, chaotic neutral. neutral. So they're kind of pals a little bit, right? We, you know, the chaos, sure. Yeah. But, I mean, he's not uh, He's not evil. I guess I don't know how he would are. react to them. Like, okay, these guys oh, are I mean, they're, misunderstood. They're, yeah. No, no. I mean, his uh, his attitude toward them, I think, would be like, it's bad, it's bad news. Like, okay. these, these, they have to go. So yeah, alarm bells. They're, they're hurting other people. And yeah, and it looks like they're there. setting up shop in a barn, you know, on the outskirts of town. So we can't have that. These are these are hags of Gyrana. Well, rather, uh, not n- maybe you're, maybe not maybe yes, hags. You're not sure, but they are at least uh, worshippers. Well, I guess seeing that reaction from Harim, he's gonna Mitch is gonna rev his armor suit up. I don't know if that's gonna initiate combat or if that's. Well, basically, here are your choices. If you want to approach and try to talk, you can. If, you, if you're telling me you're going to run down the hallway, then I'm going to put you into these squares here, and it'll be it'll be initiative. All right, what do you guys think? You want to chat this one out? I'm not running anywhere near them, but, I mean, if you guys want to, if you guys want to charge the light brigade, I'm all for it. Um, all right, we'll mention, like, hey, what's going on? What are you doing here? So you're standing back uh, 10, 20 feet. Um, they can see you. You can see them. You go, who goes here? The woman in the back of the chamber who has the unique token, she turns to face you. And as she does this, you can see that she's got this like gray, oily, uh, veiny skin uh, on her face. Okay. She's got these fucking jowls coming down and her teeth are yellow and long and spiky. And um, as she turns to face you, like her hair 
is is barely attached to her scalp and it's like coming off of her as she's looking at you and then kind of you can almost see it like in these weird layers like it's and it's almost kind of growing really fast too under i mean she's so weird and unnatural looking and just like her skin just looks drenched and there's this grayish blackish water just running down her face and um we'll come back later (laughs) yeah (laughs) uh and she looks at you and she goes one chance to leave right now as she continues to incant and then as you look over into the corner of the room you see what is unmistakably a bassinet for like a baby okay and and that bassinet you see two sets of like arms and feet of like babies like wriggling around in the bassinet and babies are crying and there are there is definitely two infants in the bassinet in the corner of the chamber furthest away from you and they're crying and their crying is getting louder and louder and the other how many hit points do they have the babies yeah. um very few i have to say <laughs> not very many are they on but the they are there just out of curiosity yeah yeah right here there's the bassinet okay cool just want to just in case something oh the ouija board okay um you don't want to explode on those babies or maybe you do i don't know there's babies there's there's babies in here i think seeing that she is clearly a fucking monster of some sort and that there's babies like mitch just charges like yeah let's go in Um, all right all right fuck it right yeah good yeah, that's kind of what I thought might happen, given that there's babies <laughs> and a disgusting, you know, hag of Lyrana down here. But I'm glad you... dead babies. Yeah, well, I don't think they will... You know what? I'll tell you what. Make a perception check to All see right. what you think of these babies. It's a 20. Adjusted. They don't look undead. They look like babies. Like healthy little babies. They're not undead yet. That's where we're going. God, you were just... Yeah. Taking all of my high above ten rolls away from me before combat. <laughs> Screen them. <laughs> all right, um, Mitch, how'd you do? Uh, it'd be a seventeen for initiative. Serio. Thirteen. Kritala. Uh, rolled a twelve for a total of eighteen. Drakomeng. Twenty-three. There you go, Bill. My guy. It is Cultist A's turn. And then Harry okay. is 27. Oh. Well, there it is. Oh, ho, ho, ho. Hey, guys. Would the babies get for initiative? <laughs> <laughs> no, let me roll the initiative for the babies. Okay. All right. It's the first baby's turn. <laughs> the first baby. Uh, the, the first baby uh, rolls over for the first time in his life in his bassinet. It's very cute. Oh, it's one not safe. Uh, yeah, yeah. Um, no, it is a Harim's turn with that 27. Chris, take it away. All right, so for Harim's first two action, he's going to cast Bane around himself. Ooh, okay. Let me get you an aura. What does Bane do again? It's a, it's a penalty to enemies' attack rolls, but it does not affect your allies. Okay. And for Harim's third action, he's going to move up here around this uh, corner. Okay, he's kind of hugging this, uh, this, like rock hewn wall getting himself closer to the cultists and it is cultist a's turn and cultist a uh, will rush herring oh. she ceases her cast she takes a single move action into herring's bane so she'll need to make a will save oh i will do hey. that now did not see the charge yeah did not expect that 16 total that's a fail so minus one on the attack Oh, minus wow. one on the attack. As long as they're within the bane. Okay. For her second action, she pulls the dagger out as she's running toward Harim, and for her third, uh, she will uh, she'll strike with that thing on Harim. Ooh, Ooh interesting. Pretty good roll for her twenty-three. Oh, and that that's that's totally accounting hits him. for the bane. That totally hits him. Couldn't happen to a better NPC. <laughs> She's going to do six damage to Harim. Jeez, we gave Harim. him a last name, right? What what was the last name we gave him? Oh, it's we're, on. We were talking the, about this. It's on the kingdom sheet. Uh, well, let me look that yeah. up for you guys. Silver chair. Oh, silver chair. Harim silver chair. That's right. <laughs> wow. Okay. <That's, laughs> Harim would listen to grunge. 
right? <laughs> thought he'd be like it. more of a Cure fan, but whatever. <laughs> just the whole conversation now, Serenity, that's just coming back to me. <laughs> I had completely forgotten that we named him Harry in the Silver Chair, but that's his name. All right, that's the end of Cultist A's turn. That takes us to Dry Cole May. All right, I'm going to hunt prey on the uniqueness back there. Okay. And I'm going to fire off a round and see how it goes. <laughs> okay. <laughs> a round. Okay. 15 plus... You never roll below 12, 12 until you do. Plus 11. Oh, so 21. Uh, so a total of, what, 26? I said 21 because I'm an idiot. <laughs> um, like Jack. He's not a mathologist. Yeah. No, three plus one. So that's nine. No, you've got you a striking get... rune on your bow, don't you? Yeah, you do. Yeah. So it'd be yeah. a 3d8. Would it be a 3d8? Yeah, because you, you yeah. got the d8 from Hunted Prey, right? And then yeah. the d8 huh. from the bow. So it'd be, and then the d8 from the striking. Yep. So you just so, roll another d8. So add another seven to that. Damn. 16. 16 damage down. Not bad. Not bad. Um, yeah, the, the arrow goes through her jowls. Um, and it, uh, it's just like, she's like, Rrr! you know, that happens. <laughs> she's charge ripping all of a sudden. I'm going to command. You know what? No, I'm going to shoot again. Why not? That is a 12 plus 11. So 23 hit. Well, yeah, but right? if you map it, then it's 12 plus six, Ow. right? Yeah. So 18. Yeah. yeah. So that one will miss. Okay. And that's going to take us to this, this, uh, this haggish person here. Let me see what I got here. We don't need to do that. You don't need to like target Mitch with that little distance arrow. He target if it's a burst thing, we're screwed because it's all of us, (laughs) right? She's gonna pick up a baby and throw it at us. (laughs) (laughs) Telekinetic projectile. What do you choose to? How heavy is a baby? Are yeah, are babies one bulk or less? That'd be something, wouldn't it? Be one bulk or less. Please don't throw your babies, everybody. <laughs> PSA, don't throw your babies. Don't throw the babies. She's going to step forward right into the middle of the summoning circle, placing herself exactly 30 feet away from Dry Colme, who just shot her in the jowl with an arrow, and she's going to cast a spell upon you, and I need a will save right now for Dry Colme. Shit, Come on, shit, Bill. Shit. 29. There you go. It's a, nat- it's a natural 20. And then my oh. bonus is 9. Again, you leave with the natural 20. (laughs) (laughs) That's probably a crit success then. Nice. (laughs) Natural 20. That's good because I have a feeling that nothing good was going to happen if you failed. No. No, No, nothing at all. Boy, you are unaffected by whatever she just did. I'd rather have a natural 20 on a will save than an attack roll. She's going to pull this gnarly looking dagger as her third action. It's like got this green tint to it. And that's going to take us then to Kritala. Yeah. So I think Kritala is going to... He's going to move 5, 10, 15, 20, 25. He's going to move 30 feet and get right up in her face. The Oh, you know, my. The, right into the flank between two cultists and right yeah. face-to-face with this hag. Okay. Yep. And then he's going to attempt to trip her. Oh. So roll an athletics check. Oh, how about a natural 19 for a total of 32? Oh. Wow. (laughs) That'll work, but she reacts first to what you have just done. She's got an interesting ability. Um, I've never seen this before, so I'll just read it out. Um, This is called Spiteful Command. Uh, It's an auditory reaction. The trigger is that she is targeted with an attack or a single target spell. I would classify, it doesn't say a strike, it just says an attack. So since the trip has the attack trait, I kind of classify that. Do you guys agree? I agree. Sure. Sure. Um, As an effect, she commands a cultist within reach of the triggering creature to attack the creature, allowing it to make a melee strike after the triggering action resolves its effects. Okay, let's resolve the trip first, and then you're going to eat an attack. Yeah, I uh, resolve the trip with a 32. Oh, right. Of course. <laughs> um, Maybe. So, that's a, so she'll go prone. I think she takes a D6, right? Because that's a crit. Uh, oh, that's a, that's a crit. Yeah. Um, oh, yeah. Yeah, the yeah, target falls and lands prone, takes 1D6 bludgeoning damage. So yeah, let me roll nice. that real quick. Uh, three damage. Okay. So she goes prone. And then one of these cultists here next to you is going to attack you. They just have to do an unarmed strike, though, because their daggers weren't out. That's natural, too. I think uh, that ain't going to do anything. Uh, so someone tries to punch you, and you're just like, I don't, I don't know. I don't care. 
Okay, what else he got? He looks down. He looks down at the head cultist, and he goes, "Woo! Now we go to school." <laughs> and then <laughs> for his third action, he is going to actually move back here. Oh man! Okay, so you get back out. So you just run in. You you you, you knock do her a, ass. Knock her on her tuchus. Yeah, what, I, I'm picturing like Mortal <laughs> Kombat one where you did the leg sweep and she just falls on her butt. There you go. Yeah, and then you're out of there. Okay. All right, Cultist B. Cultist B will pull the dagger, run toward Kritala. She goes, you will die! And she, uh, as her third action, she will try to strike you uh, with her dagger. Oh. Um, man, I don't know. I was pretty high on the die. Um, the total for her is going to be a 27. Oh, yeah. That oh. hits it. That hits. Just a little d4. Um... So two damage, um, so six, seven, so uh, so seven damage, and an eighth point of damage, which is evil damage. And I think I might have forgotten to apply that point of evil damage to Herring, but I uh-huh. remembered it for you. So there's so, so it's total of eight, and one of those points is evil damage. Okay, eight damage total, though. All right. Yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah, it's like kind of you just feel this horrible coldness that as this dagger kind of uh, uh, slashes at you. Um, that's the end of uh, Cultist B's turn. That takes us to Mitchell Lewis Groning. Mitchell Lewis Groning sees his opening. He's going to take it, and he is going to move. Oh no! Five, ten, yeah. Ten. Yep. I think I might have. I think I might have effed up. Um, right. He's going to move kind of in front of the special looking cultist here and okay. with one cultist to his north and one to his what? South. What? Okay. I'm so yeah, excited. I think you're pri- I think you're gonna explode. Is that true? Yes, yes. Okay. Just prior to that happening though, I'm gonna resolve the zero check on you. Oh <laughs> no. All right. Uh-oh. All right. I'm gonna do it. Chris, you ready to go? I got what do I gotta roll? Yeah, we need a we need a D twelve to figure out what level of misfortune um, is gonna okay. happen here. All right. Um, eight. Eight. So that is a minor misfortune. Mm. Yeah, it's going to be fine. Now we need a uh, uh, D100. Okay. I'm using my new frosty die that my son Uh-oh. picked out for me. Is that good or bad? I guess we'll see. They haven't been rolling so hot. They haven't been rolling so hot lately so far. Uh, 39. 39. We're scrolling. We're scrolling. Um, you suffer a painful sting and are afflicted with giant wasp venom at stage one. Oh, that doesn't sound good. That doesn't, that doesn't sound good. No. That sounds bad. Giant wasp venom. Look, we have, look at us. <laughs> you got a wasp in your in your suit. So you are afflicted with it at stage one. Okay, so you're going to take uh, 2d6 poison damage, and you what? are clumsy one. Clumsy one. Yeah, that's the only way that poisons ever work for me is if I don't have to have you guys roll have to apply. <laughs> if they automatically apply. <laughs> yeah, that's the only time. I can't believe it. This is uh, the saving throw, and this is a DC 25 fort save. You'll get that at the beginning of your next turn uh, to see if you go to stage two or if you go to stage zero. But let me roll that damage for you. Uh, four. And, of course, please apply clumsy one to your sheet. It is. I'll take off the four. Please proceed with your turn. All right. Um, I need... I need uh, cultist C, D, and the special one to make a basic reflex save. Okay, here comes the uh, reflex save of the first one. Uh, decent roll. I think she might have passed uh, 27. I always forget where that's posted. Are you on Path Builder? Yes, I am. It's, it's uh, right above your list of, like, medicine lore. Uh, it's the right right above above oh, uh, 20, 20. Yeah, 20 is a class DC. Okay. All right, so we got one pass from the lead uh, cultist. Um, looks like another pass from C, and a nice failure from D. Almost a crit fail on D's part. So, yeah, roll it out. Uh, I think All it's four D six now. It is four D six. It's a, not a terrible spread. That is going to be thirteen points of damage. Did the you you accounted for her being flat footed when you did her check, right? Did that affect it? Oh, I did not, but thank you. Um, doesn't look like it would have made a difference. It wouldn't affect it. Okay, she just, yeah, she rolled 27, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, fuck yeah. I rolled a 19 on my flat check, so oh, I can yeah. do that again. Oh, nice, man. Oh, nice. You're getting better at your armor. 
You're getting so good at all this stuff. And that was a two-action explosion, right? Are you all yeah, done? Was, yeah, I'm done. That's my turn. That was amazing. Cultist C against your flat-footed armor class will draw a dagger. Does flat-footed stack with clumsy? I guess throw it on your sheet and see if it does. Oh, sure. Uh, add condition... Yay, it does. Cool. <laughs> so you only lost one. More. Oh, it does stack. Okay. It does. Okay. Yeah. Well, all right. Oh, cool. Fucking wasps. Uh, the first thing that happens is that Cultist C is going to use an ability called Fanatical Frenzy. The requirement is that the cultist had taken damage and is neither fatigued nor already in a frenzy. Uh, that all applies. The effect, the cultist flies into a frenzy that lasts one minute. While frenzied, the cultist gains a plus one status bonus to attack rolls and a plus two status bonus to damage rolls. But they take a negative two status penalty to armor class. So this cultist is going nuts. Um, and uh, with that, she's going to roll an attack roll on you. Four on the die. That's going to miss. What is Subject the total? To, um, I mean, she'd be in the low. She'd be okay. in the low teens. Okay. Yeah. okay. Just, yeah. um, and subject to the MAP, she's going to do it again. Um, mm, let's see. I think that's... Oh, man, that's going to be close. I think that's a 19. That's it. Yeah. all things. She barely gets you, huh? Yep. Well, because the clumsy in the flank, of yeah, course. Yeah, yeah. Flank, yeah. This is, so some of these little uh, thingy dings are all starting to stack up a little bit. So she's going to do, she's got that little, oh, four on the die, uh, 12, uh, 13, 13 damage, Holy shit. including that one little point. So she's nice little, she's got some synergies that are, that are kind of yeah. spinning up around her and stuff. And you kind of get the feeling that there's like an, there's like an aura in this room, maybe something emanating from the summoning circle too, you know, cause it's just like, it just, you just feel so put upon down here and you, you kind of got a feeling that these are not like trained soldiers but something in this room is making them supernaturally competent that you, you wouldn't have normally assumed. You know, you're not sure what you can do about it. But again, these just look like regular villagers to you. But how how all of a sudden did she just plunge this dagger into your shoulder? You know, it's just crazy. Um, anyway, that's going to do it for uh, Cultist C. That brings us to Sirio Xavier Sertova. All right. We're going to be brave and move up into melee. So Sirio is going oh, to... Not? use a move action and move south of D and then kind of point north and tag uh, two cultists and then what I think is probably their leader as well as Mitch with a rejuvenating flame. Oh, hey. nice. Oh, oh yeah. nice. Very nice. All Love right, it. man. They get reflex saves? Uh, yes. Let me double check and make sure. Yep. Basic reflex save. Fail, Mike. Twice. Cultist C rolls a 21. That's pass. Cultist D rolls a natural one. That, that is a crit fail. Crit fail. There you go. And yeah. the, the boss, the boss rolls a 25. That's a pass. Okay, so D will take double. The, the leader in C will take half. All right, I rolled seven fire damage, so the crit fail will take 14. And then Mitch, you heal seven. You Sweet. gain two temporary HP. And you also gain plus one to your fortitude save for a minute. Oh, hell yeah. Thank you, sir. Um, Cultist D dies from this rejuvenating flame. Oh, it melted. Awesome. Fantastic. She is out of here, and her turn was right up next. So that was pretty dope, man. You ran up and killed her before she could retaliate. Taking that flat footed right off. Yep, that's right. And Mitch is feeling doing better too. That that takes Mitch out of the flank. That takes us into round two, and the babies are getting louder in their little baby bassinet. Harry, it is your turn. All right. So Harry, on his first action, he's going to concentrate and increase the range of his bane. That uh, all of a sudden that bane's looking a little bit bigger. Yeah. And then his good. second action, I don't know if I can kind of squeeze around this corner or if I need to walk around Cultist A. Uh, you, you could try to tumble through on A, but yeah, I can't give you that diagonal move, unfortunately. Okay, his speed's only 20, so let's see what we can do. 5, 10, 15, 20. I think I can make yes. it there. Yes, you nice. can. Okay. So he, <laughs> he moved so he, three spaces as the crow flies. He's like, can you just picture him like, excuse me, excuse me, excuse me, everybody, you know, working himself around all these crazy cool stories. <laughs> excuse me, excuse me, Grotus. Grotus here. Grotus coming through. Grotus. I'm sorry, Chris, you were saying. That's okay. Um, and so that puts uh, all all those guys in range of his bane. So C needs yeah. to make a save, and so does the head hag. Okay, C uh, makes a... Oh, God. Uh, just a 15 on C fails. That's a fail. So minus one to attack. 
Okay, and uh, the leader of the uh, sect here, natural 20. Oh, sorry. Oh, so she a- is unaffected, I would imagine. Yep. Um, and then Harry, he got, he's got his war flail out. Um, he does. Yep. And he says, Cultist A, you may have stabbed me, and I knew it was going to happen, but it hurt. <laughs> and he attacks <laughs> Cultist A, ooh, put a three on the die, so that's a total of 11. Oh, you know, that will miss, but it's not that close. You get the feeling that these um, these four cultists, you know, are, are just like regular people that seem to kind of be empowered, but they're, they're kind of, they're not, they're not, they're not formidable. You know what I'm saying? Like, mm. they're, they're, don't get me wrong, they're trying to kill you, and they do seem to have devoted themselves to Gairana, but they're not that formidable. Um, it is Cultist A's turn. And um, she just, again, she's just sticking with the same, like, you know, I'm going to kill you rhetoric. And um, and she she screams out something like, protect the children, protect the children. It's just going to be a series of dagger uh, thrusts uh, versus Harry. She's going to try to work that HP down on him. Uh, let's see, four on the die. That'll likely miss him. Yeah, that's going to be in the low teens. Uh, second one, seven on the die, nothing. Third one, nine on the die. I got nothing, so she's just wow. slashing at oh, him. That's awesome. And with the penalty and everything, even against his flat-footed armor class, she just cannot make it happen. Yeah, Harrams, he's not too nimble, but like he's just dodging. He's pulling Matrix moves right now. Yeah, I, I feel, feel like, like his armor. Oh yeah, totally. oh, yeah. Oh yeah, that <laughs> He's is maybe. standing still and it's just clink clink clink. <laughs> yeah, she can't get she can't work it through the chain mail or something. Clink. Um Dry Cole May. Alright. <clears throat> Dry is going to send Hoot to C. He's gonna command Hoot to attack and then a command Hoot to go into a support role. Okay. I like Let's it. resolve so, that. Uh, well since he, Hoot already did the move action, Hoot only has the economy to, to do the support oh, role. Oh, he's just gonna go in support role then. Yeah. So gonna, and then I'm gonna use the stag helm on C. Oh, the stag oh, helm! Yeah. Whoa! What? I nice don't job. What that does? It uh, makes her flat-footed. And oh. she is flat-footed, man. She is. And, and, and I, like I kind of. Oh, like I'm you're making C flat-footed or the the named or the special? The I'm um, C. 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 C is already flat-footed. How is C flat-footed? She's flanked, but not to. Dry. She's not flat-footed as to dry though. She's oh, flat-footed as to the owl. Oh, niche. Okay. 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 Seventeen hit. Sorry, 18. It's 18 hit. 18 against flat-footed armor class. Uh, yes. That will hit this cultist. 12. 12 damage on cultist C. Yep. And that is enough. Cultist C takes that uh, arrow to the chest and goes down hard as Hoot is gouging out her eyes. (laughs) What else you got? Oh, that Hoot. (laughs) Oh, that (laughs) Crazy Hoot. Uh, I got one attack left, didn't I? You do? Uh, I guess I'm going to go for old hag in the center. That's a 15 minus 5, so that's 10 Mm -hmm. plus 11. That's 21. 21 uh, versus the boss hag. Um, She's laying on the ground. Because I would say with the cover, she would have. She's got some cover from you. um, So that that would have created a miss. But because she is currently prone, uh, that actually will hit her. Yeah, so you land an arrow. Uh, into and your she's still my hunter prey. prey. Yeah. yeah, and this would be the first time this round, so yeah, you get the 3d8 on her. Mike, I'm sorry, don't uh, you get a bonus to range attacks by being prone? I think that that's a Pathfinder 1 thing, but oh, let, okay. let me look it up real quick. Okay. And a Starfinder thing. And a starfighter. The prone condition. You're lying on the ground. You are flat-footed. You take a negative two circumstance penalty to attack rolls. The only move actions you can use while you're prone are to crawl and to stand. Standing up ends the prone condition. You can take cover while prone to hunker down and gain greater cover against ranged attacks. That's what it is. But if she had, you have to take. Yeah, if I thought to do it. Oh yes, yeah. You do have to use that action, and then if you take cover against ranged attacks, you get the negative, or you get the plus four circumstance bonus. Oh shit! Okay. Wow, really good rule reminder on that because I should have done that, but no. So yeah, it just looks like she was flat footed. So yeah, that'll that'll work. Let's get that three d eight. It's fifteen. Fifteen damage. Okay, yeah, she's whoa. you know, she's Bam. more robust than these other uh, cultists, but you know, she's looking hurt. I mean, she's looking hurt. Um, that's going to bring us then to her. Oh man, let's see. So she's lost half her cult um, in the last six seconds. Interesting. We do a ton of burst damage. Yeah, you guys are you guys are hitting hard. Well, and plus, you, this is just, this is a. There are some fights. 
I've noticed that this party does not as well against single big bads, but if the if the threat is spread out amongst mm. a lot of people, you guys have that ability to really manage um, the individual bad guys. Oh, interesting. Okay, she reaches out and she clutches Mitch's ankle Ew. with her horrible, oh, no. horrible <laughs> hand. Ew. And I need Mitch to make a fortitude. I need Mitch to make a fortitude save. Come on, Mitch, uh, you got this. Uh, uh, it's a twenty-two. There you go. I'll pass. Fail by one. Oh, oh no. you've, you've got my rejuvenating flame. Did you already add that <gasps> to your fortitude? Bonus? No, I did not. I forgot about that. So that would be a. 23 because of the, oh, really the rejuvenating frame gives a fort bonus it does oh shit for, for oh, one no. that, that makes it <laughs> a pass shit. yes that makes it, that's you incredible know what? yeah it's chris incredible. nice um thank you i for completely forgot nice about that. okay so this is a base so, okay so it'll just be half damage instead of 6d6 negative damage Jesus. you will take half that so let me just i'll still roll the 66 for fun i'll just roll it here in the in the, in the vtt is she trying to rip your foot off oh my god wow so i i i managed 25 on a 66 so that'll just be 12 uh damage it's still a lot um and you notice that her yeah. wounds uh begin to heal uh commensurate <laughs> with that damage oh. she, just took, she just took my attack <sighs> okay Okay. But that could have been a lot worse without that rejuvenating flame. Man, yes. that yeah. was Clutch. nice. That and was that really, is only really nice. 10 damage to me because of those 10 hit points. Nice. Okay. For her uh, final action, I guess. Hmm, what is she going to do? I guess I could stand, but. Or I could crawl out of this bane. Or I could do that take cover on the ground. Yeah, I'll take the. I'll take. I'll just, we, just, we just read about it. I'll take cover yeah. on the ground. That's just against range against, attacks, Against right? ranged attacks, yeah. Well, so, due to the giant sword in front of her. Okay. Yeah, that's true, yeah. but she does remain flat-footed after doing that. Yeah, so that's what she'll do. She'll, so she reaches out, she grabs your ankle, her wounds knit themselves closed, not all the way, of course, and then she takes cover on the ground. Uh, Kritala. All right. So Kritala will, will step over here, and he'll move up five, ten, move up thirty uh, feet, God, and just dash up into the flank. Oy. Yep, uh, and then he'll uh, he'll go into tiger stance for mm. his second action. And then we're gonna do a flurry of blows, um, and it's gonna do the plus one uh, striking tiger claw. However, I'm going to do it with non lethal damage. Oh, he is looking to, to this person alive. Take, huh? Yeah, let's uh, maybe she's got some questions that she can answer for us on what's going on with this cult business. So let's see what this turns out as. Plus 11. A uh, total of 17. It's probably going to miss. Um, yeah, with the flat-footed. So, yeah, that's going to miss. Uh, we'll go ahead and try it again for the with the second. So second claw. Damn. Uh, natural four. Yeah, that'll miss too. So that will man, you, you, uh, you use uh, digital dice, and I never see it, man. I, I I love watching digital dice just fuck people up. It's just they roll lower. <laughs> it did I swear me. they do. <laughs> Yep. Uh, cultist B is like, come back here. Oh. And she says it like mingly. And so she follows Kritala over there and puts Kritala into a flank between Cultist B and the Tricky. cult leader. And mm-hmm. with two actions left, she tries to stab you. Uh, with this dagger but for actually she's going to go into a fanatical frenzy first just for fun so she's going to take a plus one status bonus to attack rolls and a plus two status bonus to damage rolls oh, 12 no. on the die mm, i don't know that's going to be 21 yep that got me that would have got me okay. even if i wasn't flat foot so mm, 12 she maxed out the d4 again it's Whoa. that yeah, it's that bonus sick. damage from being in the room it's that evil damage it's that frenzy it all stacked up on you and i so that's yeah. gonna be 12 damage um Big that's gonna end cultist b's turn that brings us to mitch um yeah mitch is going to put his hand that he used to manipulate his armor in the last turn put that on the other handle spot of his roca sword and uh do a two action attack here Oh boy! Wait, so you At, know, uh, you're two hand in this thing. Two hand in this thing, right down. Okay. That's a five on the die. That's gonna be a miss. Okay. Oh. That's my turn. Is it though? She's on the ground. She's in pain. Uh, it's a fifteen. 
Oh, yeah, that's a miss. Um, yeah, that'll miss her. But you got an action left. I don't, because I had to put a hand on my sword, and then it was a two-action attack. Yeah. Oh, you did the big thing. Mm-hmm. Gotcha. Okay, yeah, so you bring that down on her, and she just rolls right out of the way at the last possible second. And you Keep just... your meat hooks off me. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. Um, let's see. Sirio, Xavier, Sertova. All right. Sirio, uh, we're going to take a step back because it's getting a little crowded up here, and I'm going to drop a flaming sphere on Cultist B. Oh, no. <laughs> right in her store. Oh, oh, man. Wow. Okay. So I'll need a yeah, reflex save. That's, I knew. Oh, man. Okay. Let's see if her little culty bonus will help her. No. She'll take full damage on that. All right. So that'll do 3d6 fire damage. Goodbye, cultist B. Oh, low uh, roll. Five fire damage. She's in still. Okay. All right. That's that's my turn. Okay. Top of round three. Harry uh, silver chair. <laughs> <laughs> silver chair. But what are the babies doing? They're crying oh, yeah. louder. Oh, my <laughs> gosh. They're crying loud enough to wake up uh, both parents, even though <laughs> the baby's across the house. So Harry, uh, his, his bane's big enough at this point, um, so he's going to focus on Cultist A and try to do a trip attack. So the war, flayer, the war flail has the trip trait. Oh, okay. Yeah, it means with two hands on that thing, you can still make the trip. Uh, so roll the athletics check. Oh, so you have to have two hands? Uh, well, he's wielding in two hands, but because it has the trait, he can still trip even though his hands are full. That's what the trip. Oh, it's does. a two-handed weapon. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you normally okay, have to have one hand free to not trip know somebody. That. Mm-hmm. And but he can cast while holding it because he's got the he's got the feet to do that. So. That is a nineteen on athletics. Success. All right, and so he's going to follow that up with an attack with the war flail. Oh my gosh! Here you go. End her. Twenty-three. Oh. That, did you oh. subject that to the multiple attack penalty? Uh, eighteen. Still hits. Still <laughs> hits. Okay, so you bring that down onto her as she's now prone on the ground. Four bludgeoning damage. Oh, roll to roll to one on my d10. <laughs> oh, herring. <laughs> What a move. Okay. <laughs> All right. Anything at else? I guess he's got an action left. At least I tried. He, he seems like a total badass up until the no damage. <laughs> right. Kicks her legs out from underneath her and swings his flail and like... Can you, can you imagine he does two revolutions with it like over his head? So the first one sweeps the leg and the second one he brings it down and it's just like nothing. Come on. Like Harry. catches her in the elbow. She's like holding it, looking at him with a dirty look. Cause, like, the She's like, ah. Exactly, Ooh. yeah. That really stinks. Oh, man. And it is her turn. She stands up. And uh, she, uh, this is Cultist Day who just got tripped. And she's just going to go at Herring with the dagger. There's the natural 20. I've been looking uh, for that. Oh, oh. oh Herring. Oh, dear. It was meant to be. Uh, so that is going to be 2d4 plus 16. Oh, my God. Because she's got all this stuff going for her right now. This is going to hurt, I think. I have faith in Harry. Um, 19 damage to Harry. Two of those points are evil damage as well. So she just rises up and just sticks that dagger almost into his heart. Ooh, yeah, so he's definitely going to use shield block um, oh, to, absorb, yeah. to absorb five of that. Okay. Um, and so, yeah, so 19 total, that'll bring it down to 14. Man, Pretty you can dark. just imagine this energy field, like, shattering around him as the dagger is re- deflected a little bit. Um, natural one on that final one. I need a I need a fumble card. I guess we forgot the crit card for her. It's too late now, but I'll take a fumble card on uh, Cultist Day. Well, I mean, it's uh, is Cultist Day has a name, or is it just Cultist Day? Oh, that's right. She doesn't even have a name. What am I saying? Okay, so she doesn't get any of that. Okay, good. Um, that's going to end it for A. Drycol May, uh, get us out of this fight, man. Well, <clears throat> Dry is... Sorry. Dry is going to take a free action and drop his bow. Whoa. He's going to move to here. He's going to draw the sword. He's going to take a whack. Okay, yes. and for the for the listeners, you are in melee now with the prone cultist leader. Yes, yes, because she was huddled on the floor, and I didn't want to take the bow Negative for it. No, that's smart. Thing. Trying to shoot her through a crowd. I mean, it's kind of weird that an Aldori swordsman is using a sword, but, I mean, you do you. <laughs> I'm surprised as anyone. <laughs> <laughs> that's valid. 
That's a natural 20 in the dark. Oh, yeah. Oh, there you go. Oh, man. Holy shit. Yes. All right, man. Let's see. That's so going to be uh, got 3d8 plus strength. And you're, you're doing lethal damage, he too, not, right? Dry has not swung that sword in six months. That's a 68. First, First time he swings spray. it. So he just kills somebody. Yeah. 68, right? Or no? I think it'd be 5d8. It's 3d8 plus I don't think the precision. Eight. But it's a crit. The precision, I don't think, doubles. Oh, it does? Yeah, it doubles. Yeah. I don't think it does. You don't think so? I don't think it oh, does. Let's check the rules. <sighs> you guys look it up. I'm tired. <laughs> He's... She's angry as one of the is. <laughs> the one time Bill uses his sword. <laughs> well, it always goes so well for Bill Beard. <laughs> Mister, I can't roll under a 15. He's going to roll cold starting yep. starting at some point, and it's going to yep. be brutal. Yeah. Oh, I'm finding the same thing you do. When you Yeah, here's a, here's a Redditor. When you double the damage on a critical strike with a strike or with any other action with Use the phone rules. Okay, roll the do- roll the double roll double the usual number of damage die. So Bill will go from four to from, from two to four. Add double your ability modifier to damage. Okay, that's his strength. Add double any circumstance or conditional bonus and penalties damage. Don't double extra damage that occurs only on a critical hit. Oh, okay. I guess you do. I guess we'll yep. go with Reddit on this one. Um, so it's going to be six d eight plus eight. Oh, is your is your strength eighteen or no? My strength is. 16, I think. Okay, so 68 plus 6. Blood die, five, I like that you had 68. <laughs> 14, 22, 30 plus 6, 36. Jesus. 36 damage? Yeah. <laughs> That's amazing. Try more, please. Oh, man. Okay. Do so I even need this, to pull a crit card? This, uh, you do not. This uh, this this cold iron Aldori uh, dueling sword comes down and takes the head off of this uh, Gyrana hag. It rolls across the ground and comes to rest next to the bassinet with the two babies inside who continue to wail. You easily dispense with the other two cultists. Um, you can let me know if you want them alive or dead. Doesn't matter to me. Um, and, uh, you're left in this, uh, basement now, this, again, this rock hewn chamber underneath this barn. Um, and, uh, again, you're just standing around and you got these babies and possibly these cultists. What do you do? We're going to have Harim do a religion check on this rune on the ground. Yeah. Good call. Just to kind of examine it. Well, okay. Got a 22. Looks like they were in the midst of trying to summon something to fight you, but <laughs> interrupted them. They abandoned the, the ritual um, as you came in and attacked them. But you don't know what would have come through, but they were trying it, to open up something. But the but the ritual's over now. Kritala had mentioned Drake trying to do un, undead or uh, unlethal yeah, non-lethal. damage. Yeah, non-lethal. Sorry. Um, do we want to question one of these hags? Like thinking hag B is kind of cornered up against the wall between you know the set of Kratal. I don't know if we want to capture one of them alive. I mean really I guess it'd be it'd be hag A because my I haven't dismissed my sphere. Oh I <laughs> do you I think about your sphere. Yeah. Yeah maybe Hag B got uh, uh got burned up by the sphere. But yeah maybe Hag A is like tied up um uh, uh you know on the other side of the room and she's looking pleadingly over at the two infants in the bassinet. Mm-hmm. Uh, so she's so she's there and she's tied, bound, and gagged. I assume. Uh, maybe not but gagged. I, I, got, I have more. I got to tell you though. So Harim's uh, religion check also revealed uh, that this chamber is subject to a consecrate ritual as well, which was uh, helping these hags or not th- these cultists and this hag uh, was helping them um, act supernaturally. They were receiving bonuses to attacks and damage because of this consecrate ritual. And anyone who was lawful good, if any of you, I don't think any of you were, but anyone who is lawful good would have received like severe penalties from being in here. But you guys are more like kind of neutral and neutral good and stuff. So it didn't matter. Dry is over in front of the uh, bassinet where the children are. Mm-hmm. Clueless. He's just kind of patting them on the head, trying to get them to be quiet. He has no idea what he's doing. They look to be nearly newborns. Um, okay. Like they are, they are tiny. And in fact, as you get a look at them, I mean, it, it looks like they, they were 
very, very new babies. Um, and you know, they haven't even been totally cleaned up yet from their, from their entrance to the world. So to speak. Mitch confronts hag or a uh, cult to say, whose kids are these? She says, one is mine. The others, the other was hers. And she points over to one of the dead cultists. What were you going to do with them? She doesn't answer. She, she bites her tongue. She says, you'll burn. You'll burn for this. So Kratal is going to, he's going to, he kind of hears the question going on and he, he leaves the, the babies. He realizes that his uh, technique is not helping because they're just too young <laughs> to play peekaboo. So he, he walks back across the room uh, and he kind of, he kind of kneels down next to uh, cultist a and he's like well, who who are you trying to summon who are you going to bring down here to kick our ass she's she's honestly not sure she was following instructions from the leader um but she just says she says melgorzada that's her name that was her name melgorzada that was the hag's name? said a champion oh the hag's name she says melgorzada said a champion would come through to help us Help you with what? Can I roll a society Defend check? Ourselves. Have I ever heard that name? Defend ourselves. Uh, yeah, roll society on Mal Gorzada. Uh, a total of 16. Mitch has a total of 29. Mal Gorzada, no, but Marjorie, yes. You think maybe you've seen this woman before around town, you know, maybe in a disguise, like this is her real form. But yeah, I mean, there's, there's, yeah, you're like, oh, I, yeah, I've seen her around. I've seen these four uh, cultists around too. They all kind of arrived at around the same time here. So this was, I mean, can we, <clears throat> this was her, one of her, like, this is her child. One of yeah. these babies is her mm-hmm. child and the other one yeah. is one of the other dead cultists. Totally. Where are the fathers? Not here. Oh, okay. Well, we got to do something with the babies and we got to do something with the yeah. cultists. Oh, they are I crying. Say, Those babies are crying, crying, crying. I say we grab the kids and bring them back to the camp. So you, you guys are, you guys each take two. Of you guys are going to take a baby each and uh, emerge from this chamber. Um, yeah, make a like um. Who's who's holding a baby? Who's who's got a baby? katal has got a baby. I got a baby. Dry, Dry's got a baby. katal has got a baby. Who Dry's got a baby. All right, each of you guys. I'll give you. I'll give you a perception check each. Twenty-one. Yeah. Oh no! Total of nine. Natural three. Three. Yeah, your baby is a baby girl, and she looks normal to you. Dry's got the baby boy, and there's something about him. There's something about the color of his eyes. It's a little, um, a little weird uh, to you. Um, and you point this out to the others that there's, there's something, this baby doesn't look, and I, I guess I haven't been specific, but these are both human babies. Okay. And you're like, this baby doesn't look right. And then you look over at the baby girl that Krutal is carrying around and you're like that one that, yeah, there's something in the eyes with these babies. You, you say there's something wrong with their eyes. Mm, let me, mm. let me take a look at these children. <laughs> Ooh, Harry. And so Harry's going to uh, do a religion check, see if he's um, read or if he can recall knowledge um, about uh, baby cult. And you say Gairana was yeah. the, the god? Yeah. Ooh, 14 plus 10. That's a 24. He goes, stop. Hang on. These are, these are changelings. These two oh. babies. These two young ones. These hags, what they, what they do is they'll create these children and then they will switch them with the children of unsuspecting new parents so that the changeling is raised by the parents uh, instead of their actual children. We caught this before it occurred, but I, I think they would have attempted to uh, insert these children into uh, your citizens' homes and uh, abscond with their with their real children. That's messed up. These are changelings. Just like cuckoo birds. Yeah. And, you know, he would know that, like, I think changeling is a, is a, is a, is, a is one of ancestry. them named ancestry. Jekylls. I was just right, going to say, yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Chris had a, a changeling in, a, in, a, in an old game, but like changelings, when they get old enough, they like, they like hear the call of like their hag mother, I think, or something like that. Mm. And they, they feel compelled to return into the back into the fold. And so, yeah, like, like Donnie said, like a cuckoo bird type situation. And, um, it looks as though, you know, these two, two of these cultists 
had maybe through through the power of Gairana with the uh, with this hag cult leader instructing them had had produced two changelings and that these changelings were going to get um, again inserted into your population and swapped yeah. with uh, with you know actual babies to what end like I, I guess I don't understand what's the just to fuck around or yeah you know, and it just too. builds the it builds the cult over time because oh, sure. as they grow okay, up yeah. they they then return do we Creepy. still have the the one cultist with us yes like are we bringing her back with us so i mean Kurtala would be curious if this is the if this is the first time they've done it in fort trand it, you know it kind of seems like it is but you know yeah make the um make the intimidation check to see if you can okay. get her to say more uh 14 i am rolling you know. the opposite of rocks tonight all right, Katala, hand me the mic. I'm gonna, yeah, I'm gonna, he's going to turn over. He's going to point at Sirio, and they're going to tag, and in comes in comes Sirio for the hot tag. We've got a 17. Roll to seven. I mean, she is. Well, actually, I got her will DC in front of me. Never mind. What am I saying? Let me just look at the sitting here trying to decide. Oh, oh no. Yeah, she her um. Her will say, yeah. So you've, yeah, you're, you've succeeded. Her will DC is 14. So, um, she just, she says that, that she and the other women had been following Malgorzada for a while now. And that Malgorzada had received payment from somebody to establish this cult in Fort Trand. And you see her eyes dart over to, um, a uh, a bit of a hidden false wall uh nearby Ooh. in the basement uh that opens up to reveal a small chest oh oh good deal all right Gertala, go go check that out and <laughs> while they're looking looking at that i'm just going to continue asking questions um just kind of keeping keeping eye contact and the intimidation going um did you join up Mel Gorzada after you came to Fort Trand, or did you all come here together? We came together. How came many together. times have you swapped babies? She just says, I don't know. I've been doing it once per year for a while. Did you have families already picked out here? Yeah, we, we knew what we were doing. She says, just kill me. Just end before, it now. Before we do, we need to know what towns... You were mm-hmm. here before you came here because we need um, to let leadership in those towns know what's going on. Yeah. Uh, beyond the scope, I suppose, of this all. But they came from the south. She's like, have you heard of, of, of Bristol Hill? <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> Bristol. <laughs> Bristol Hill. Is Bristol. <laughs> Bristol. No, no. I mean, yeah, I, I suppose you can. Yeah. She gives you that info. You can send those those um, messages, you know, um, to them. But, yeah, I mean, they've. You know, she's been at this a while and, you know, yeah. It's, it's well, here's the question. Like if deal. they, if she like swapped out babies in Bristol Hill, like where are the real kids? Like, you know, like, yeah. what happened with them? I don't know if we want to send that message. Like, okay, maybe just, maybe just let, let, tell a parent. <laughs> let it's it be. a, it's a pretty grim, yeah. uh, yeah, it's a, it's a grim thing that they grim do. Fate. Yeah. Grim fate. Yeah. Okay. Let's see. There, there is a small altar here um, that I, I think that that we didn't need to describe up until now. But there is a fist-sized cat's eye uh, gem atop the altar, which appears to be worth fifty gold. So get that on the list. Oh, oh. Um, and it looks again like it's like associated with their religious stuff. Like you're not sure if the cat's eye is or isn't involved in their religion, but it's there, and it kind of resembles like an eyeball almost or something. Did we search the cult leader? I don't think we did, right? We didn't search any of the bodies, right? Okay. Yeah, yeah. Um, well, first of all, with the with the ba- with the hidden uh, box, um, it looks like there is one hundred gold pieces in the box in a small uh, bag, oh. and uh, there is a short note in the box that seems to corroborate what the surviving cultist told you. There's a single line on this slip of paper written in common. It says in appreciation of our common cause and as a signature the note bears only a symbol three black teardrops oh oh and Some it was goddamn black tears. Was sad combining this with what the surviving cultist has told you it looks like the uh, the black tears got in touch with this coven 
and redirected them to Fort Trand to create trouble for you. We're going to have to deal with this black tear issue. Yes. So um, in any event, yeah, you've got these two uh, babies and Harim is kind of standing around unsure what to do. And finally he, he says, I can, they've, they're innocent. I can take them in, uh, King, if you'll permit me, let, let me, let me look after them, uh, with my followers and, and we will, we will do what we can for them. And when they get old enough, we'll, we'll try to help them deal with their, with their lineage. Sounds good to me. Do you need any help setting up an orphanage or are you planning on sending them away or are they staying in Shrikehaven? Uh, well, I think that, that they'll remain with him in Fort Trand. And at this point, you know, he'll let you know. I mean, there, he's got a couple followers of Grotus that, that he, the other fellow worshipers that he's brought into the fold, you know, in your city and that they'll, they've, they've got a small place of worship and that the, the changelings can, can live there for now. Sounds good. So from that, uh, from that box of loot, um, Siru counts out, uh, 50 gold, um, 25 for each. This should take care of them for a good long while. That'd be a lot of formula, yes. <laughs> <laughs> um, let's get uh, to uh, Malgorzada's loot. Uh, so she um, she wears leather armor. Um, she does have a wand of heal on her uh, first level, so That's you could you cool. can take that. Um, she has a, a wooden religious symbol of Gyrana. She has twenty three silver pieces. And she has this dagger. Um, I mean, it looks nice. It's got some kind of green glistening um, material kind of on it. It, I don't know, almost like a greenish glass uh, surrounding the blade. Uh, This is a dagger of venom, a level five item uh, worth 150 gold pieces. The serrated blade of this plus one striking dagger has a greenish tinge, and the hilt is sculpted to look like the head of a serpent about to strike. When you critically succeed at an attack roll with the dagger of venom, the target becomes sickened one unless it succeeds at a DC 19 fortitude save. This is a poison effect. In addition, you can activate the dagger uh, to poison a creature with a more potent poison. It is a free action which you can do once per day. Um, if you damage somebody with the dagger of venom, once per day you can poison the creature you hit with the dagger of venom um with a uh, the, per, the creature immediately has to make a dc 21 fortitude save and they'll take a d8 of poison damage uh, for four rounds um they get a save every round to see if they can end it but yeah this is um this is nice so you've got kind of two nice daggers now you've got this dagger of venom and you've got that uh, ghoul skin dagger too so some interesting loot uh that this uh module's thrown at you guys how's it going you guys got some babies is this uh do you, do you guys got two new citizens and well but you lost another five so you lost another five okay well, that was a fun little fight. I kind of liked that. You know, a little relaxing bout against some cultists, you know. Uh, Mal Gorzada was only fifth level, so not a huge oh. challenge for you guys. Not like, uh, I know. I really came into this feeling like this is going to be another yeah. Yeah. I'm sorry. The babies. The babies. Let me let me let me try that again. The babies. The babies. The babies are crying. This takes us into ra- okay. <laughs> Somebody <laughs> save the children. <laughs> okay. Guys. <laughs> and that takes us. <laughs> oh man. That takes us into round two and the babies are getting